Hi, Sandra here, and this time in GIMP we start doing something of interest and actually playing with the tools and uh, doing something which is going to be very useful for people who do decoupage, scrapbooking and put things on paper for silhouette and machines, cameos and portraits and things to cut out and other cutters indeed. Okay, so I've got an image opened up here. It's a photograph I took of a little wasp's nest on a palm tree on a nice summer day. So it's quite a, a clear image, but it still wouldn't be particularly easy just to draw a line around the outside of this if I wanted to copy it and paste it onto something else. So the tool I'm going to use is this one up here, which looks like a person with some sort of area behind them, a wibbly wobbly corner area behind them. And I'm going to double click on that. And this tool is a cross really between a magic wand and a lasso. It's a very, very nice tool to use. Now what you do is you click and you drag to draw a line around your object. Get it reasonably close but you don't have to be really super fussy. And when you get a yellow spot that means the line's closed. So instantly it's taken all this background and selected it. But you see that I've now got a circle with a paintbrush. And what you have to do is to paint over parts of your image. Not everything, but you want to get samples of all the different colours. So you want to get samples of the shade, you want to get samples of the highlight. And once you've gone somewhere around the edges, you can do that. And then you leave it to do its stuff. And it takes a minute to think about it. And then it's done its stuff. And you can see that it has gone pretty much directly where I want it to go. Now, if it hadn't picked up all of this, and if I had lots of, of the marching ants around on the inside, which indicates some kind of mask, then I could use this mode bar here to increase the selection. This is standard mode, replace the current selection, and if I clicked somewhere else on the image, it would replace what I selected with something different. But the one next to it is an additive. So if you haven't got everything selected in here that you want to select, click on that and then do the same thing on the bits that you've missed. Okay, so I've got mine selected, so I next have to press the Enter key. Now this is important because if you don't press the enter key it won't do what you expect it to do. And lo and behold you see my cutout here and it is pretty much as I want. So I'm quite happy with that. So then what I can do is I can go up to the edit button and I can go to copy. I can select a plain sheet of paper. I've just opened up you know an, an empty an empty space and then I can go to edit and I can go to paste and it'll paste it on there. So there we go it's all pasted and it can be saved as a PNG so that you end up with a transparency. Now, if I wanted to make sure that I know that the area is completely transparent behind, it's got no, no background in, what I can do is File, New, and I can click on OK. And I have selected, in my preferences previously, I've selected a transparent background. So I could go to this one again. I could go to Edit. I could go to Cut. I can go up here, click on my transparent background, 
and I can do paste and it will paste it on the transparent background. Now the other thing that you can do is you can save this as a brush. If I do an undo paste on here and I go to edit, paste as on the right hand side here I've got new image, new layer, new brush. So if I paste it as a new brush and what am I going to do? Wasp nest. There we go. And just save it as it is. And it will save for me. Take just a minute. There we go. I'm going to go back to my plain piece of paper here. And I'm going to select my brush. And you can see that the brush is now selected. This is Wasp Nest. And if I click on the bottom right corner, it has put it into the uh, selection. I already had this one, so I've got it a couple of times. But it's put it into the selection of brushes. And if I double click on that, I need it to be a bigger size because we can't see it. So make that a lot bigger. Here we go. In fact, I can stand making that a bit bigger still, unless you've got very good eyesight. Oh no, so that's not that brilliant. Okay, here we go. So I can now use it as a brush. Ta da! This is only one way of making your own brushes, but it's probably the easiest because you don't have to remember any file places. You don't have to think, oh, well, I've got to store it in my application folder, my document folder, whatever. It's worth remembering that anything that you copy and paste can be saved as a brush there and then. Whenever you copy and paste something, it gets put in the left hand corner, the top left corner of your brush selection. If you don't use it, if you don't save as a brush, it will disappear the next time you open something else and copy and paste it, it will have been replaced. But if you do the edit, copy and paste, or edit, cut and paste as a brush, you can save it. And you can then go to the dynamics and you can alter it. So random color, for example, doesn't seem that random, just seems grey and black to me, but there are all sorts of different uh, effects that you can do with it. But it will save it for you as a brush, and that's really quite handy to do. And at the same time, you can go back to your normal image here. You could add another one if you want, except for the fact if I click here, this is not selected, this is selected. I can add it in the middle, but I can't add it there because that's not selected. This is a selected area and that isn't. Okay, so if you click here and you think, it's not working, that's why. That's not selected, this is. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. Have a play around with that because it's such a useful thing to be able to do. Bear in mind, please save it as a PNG, which means exporting as a PNG. That way any transparency is kept intact and you don't have to worry about that at the other end. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.